Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to DIY push pull version three. <laughs> so the history of my push pulls actually starts with a subversion, which was my eight foot, three quarter inch fiberglass stakeout pole slash push pull. And uh, it worked fairly well. It was definitely good as a stakeout pole. I still take it with me every time I go out. But as a push pole, it was just basically long enough where I could bend over, give myself a nudge, and that was basically it. Uh, since I started doing a lot more uh, focusing on the uh, flats and backcountry, I wanted a more functional push pole that I use like when I go on the flats boats. So uh, first version started out going to Home Depot, getting a 10 foot, uh, inch and a quarter uh, round wood dowel. Uh, I guess it would be closet dowel and uh, basically putting a PVC T on one side, drilling a, a stainless steel screw and uh, creating a point and uh, using some outdoor decking um, stain to uh, waterproof it. And that was version one. Took it out and instantly knew that it worked, it was functional, but it wasn't very efficient because at 10 foot, I could basically plant it, get one push, and then I was at the top and I would have to lift it up, reset it, push, and then I'd have to reset it. So it would be like having to go walk a distance, but only be able to do one little short step, pause, one little short step, pause. So it worked, but it wasn't very efficient. So version two was going to Home Depot, getting another four foot section, and then ordering a two foot uh, two foot section, inch and a quarter aluminum tube. And what that became was a coupler between the 10 foot and the four foot. I'd run them between the two um, and then drill holes. And that made that extension of a 14 foot push pole, same, same ends on it. And uh, boom, took that out there. And I have been using that for the last couple months and I've been strictly spoke, focusing on my flats fishing and it was very effective. Uh, made a huge difference. So I could actually plant it, get around three pulls or pushes on it, and that would definitely get me moving. It would allow me to do enough angles so I could turn the kayak. Plus I could even, if I just needed to reset myself sideways to get a better throw, or like when I'm working the mangroves for those juvenile tarpon, if I just want to get a shift over so I can get a better throw into the mangroves, I could do that as well as to uh, stop and push and just make a lot of micro adjustments. Worked perfect for that. Unfortunately, uh, my last trip with it, when I caught the permit and then caught in a storm on the way back, um, I was going across the flats and I was in such a rush to get going and across before that storm hit, I had put the push pole with the point of it facing forward and the T-handle facing back. Now normally I have it the other way because the T-handle provides a stop gap. So it would hit my, um, my uh, uh, extensions that go across for my uh, Akas and Amas for my outrigger and that would stop it from falling off. But because I had it backwards, I didn't have time to stop and I was rushing it, went out like that, got into the bigger waves and that front comes up, the back goes down, that T-handle went in the water and it just basically with that forward momentum, it just ripped that thing out the back. I didn't even notice a 14 foot pole being ripped off my kayak. It was just that quick. And it was probably a minute or two later that I noticed that I was gone, but because I was in that storm, I was four miles off course, I was at risk of getting blown past Key West. I just said, screw it. Plus I have my Patreon supporters that give me a pool of money so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. Otherwise probably I would have spent time in my life risking trying to going back and finding it. I just said, screw it. I'll just build another one. So version three came about when I went to Home Depot and I was just basically going to build a version two again, but the wooden dowels that they had over there were all warped. They're all S'd out, just badly warped. I was like, ah, oh, bummer, screwed. So I'll have to wait for it or go up the marathon. But as I was walking down the aisle, I saw these things, these two just sitting there. And I thought they were just PVC pipes that someone had left there because they were just in this open section. And I checked them out and it was like heavy. Then I looked at the ends and what it is, it's that same inch and a quarter wooden dowel, but it's got this plastic shrink wrap over it, real heavy duty shrink wrap. 
and what it's for is if you want your closet and you put the hangers and stuff on this stuff, paint would just scrape right off. But with this plastic, it's very durable and it's not going to happen there. And I thought, wow, that's going to work out perfect. Version 3.0. So I ended up buying these. They're eight foot lengths. I bought two of them to give me 16 foot. Um, also, a big change is before I used that uh, aluminum uh, quarter inch uh, wide uh, aluminum piping for my coupler. I figured after I've been using that push pull for a while, kayaks don't have a lot of drag and it doesn't take a lot to move them. I do this in a couple of my videos before is I could take a Q-tip and I could push my kayak. It's just there's not any drag with, with kayaks. So with that, uh, these push poles, I'm not putting a ton of force on them when I'm using them. So I have a feeling that just a standard piece of uh, PVC will work just as fine. So this is the same two foot length, about an eighth of an inch thickness there. And I'm going to use that as my coupler for the version 3.0. Um, outside that, the normal things, I got the T, but this time I'm going to put caps on the end because the problem I had before was when I put this in the water, the the empty tubes would fill up with water and it would gurgle, go blub, 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 and make a ton of noise. And that's not good on the flats when I'm lifting it out, putting it in the water, blah, 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 blah. So this caps will prevent that. Um, all told, I am in it exactly $50. Uh, the two poles were basically $18.62 each. Uh, this two foot section was $3.40. Uh, the T was $1.34. Uh, I bought a bunch of the stainless steel cruise, screws, which are going to be the holding points for the coupler, um, as well as the T handle. Um, then I bought a $1.66 for uh, the two caps, $1.18 for two three inch stainless steel screws. I'll use one of them to join the two pieces that are inside here just just kind of to hold them together um, i'll use one of those for that and then the other one i'll drill into the uh, pointed side or before i do it i'll drill this into one side then i'll shave it the wood down cut off the head off of this and then sharpen it on my concrete uh, patio there and uh, epoxy it and then i'll be my pointed side there so i'm into it 50 bucks for the version 3.0 so We'll put this thing together and uh, let you check it out and uh, we'll do some test driving with it. So the hardest part, so I'm going to do first is basically take one of my stainless steel three inch screws. I'm just going to embed it right in the center and just screw it all the way into the wood. So the, the eye is basically right to the end. Then I'm just going to take my good old trusty buck knife and I'm going to shave this down into a point. Okay, and then once I've got it down to the point, I'll go ahead and use my die grinder, cut off the head of the uh, screw, and then once I've got it kind of roughed out with the, uh, the knife, then I'll go on to my uh, patio and just use the concrete to finalize the uh, shaping of it, just like basically sandpaper, and then just rough it into a, a nice solid point there. And the uh, concrete is, is uh, abrasive enough that it'll sharpen the, the stainless steel as well so I get a nice point on it. Okay, this side is pretty much almost done. Uh, I've got my sharp metal point there with the stainless steel screw. Chop the head off, shave this down, and then rough cut it with the uh, concrete like sandpaper there. So the only thing left I have is to basically use some clear epoxy all over this, put a thick layer there, and that'll keep this from splintering up while I'm using it. Uh, but this side's ready to go. Now the next step is to join the two eight foot sections. And the way I'm gonna do that is using this three inch stainless steel screw. I'm gonna embed it halfway down into this side. Then once it's embedded halfway, I'm gonna cut the head of the screw off at a kind of like a 90 degree angle so it has a bit of a point to it. Then the other eight foot section, I'm gonna drill a hole to in it as a starter hole and then I'm going to thread that onto this screw and that's basically going to mate these two sections. Now on its own it's not going to be strong enough but it will hold these two together temporarily or somewhat together and then when I put the sleeve on that'll totally mate these two pieces. Alright the screws basically halfway embedded in there now I'm just going to chop the head off with the die grinder and then I can screw the other piece right to this. Alright we're all set got the stud 
got the female side, so now they'll just screw on together and then uh, I could put the coupler on top of it. Okay, we've slipped on our coupler, so I just took the uh, joint part, measured 12 inches, put a mark, and that's where the uh, end goes. So I've got 12 inches on this side, 12 inches on that side. Now I'm just going to put a couple of uh, set screws here, here, and that'll lock down this one side, and then two and two, and that should be plenty. All right, coupler's all put in. I've got eight uh, wood screws holding it in there. And it feels nice and solid, so let's get the T part done, and we'll be all set. Last but not least, we're going to put the T on, which is going to be basically our foot, so when we're using it in like soft sand or mud. So I've got a T that's going to fit on there. Fits perfectly on there. Uh, since this is plastic wrap, I'm not going to use glue, but I will use those wood screws. I'll put two or maybe four of them on there. And then I've got end spacers to kind of give it a little bit of width and then the caps to prevent that gurgling and so that'll be our end result there so now let me just put this all together permanently and we'll just about be done alright our foot slash handle is all done all glued together bolted together so last piece is just to epoxy the tip so we'll do that real quick and then we are done last but not least we're gonna use some two-part epoxy and just put a thick layer on this uh, end cap there, or point. We're going to put a pretty heavy glob and just keep double coating it and coating it until it builds up a thick layer. Um, I was concerned that it wouldn't work, but on my last push pull, nothing scratched through that layer that I put there, so definitely works good. Okay, our epoxy is all mixed up. And I'm just going to goop it on there. Nice thick coat. And I'm just going to slowly keep uh, revolving it until it dries. And that will keep that layer nice and thick. Perfect. Alright, our 16 plus foot DIY push pull is done. That is one long push pull. Alrighty, that is the DIY $50 16 foot push pull complete. I uh, just gotta wait for that epoxy to dry and it's ready for a test drive tomorrow. I'll have to check the weather, but uh, uh, it took me about 30 to 45 minutes to build. Um, that's based on the fact that I've already built one before, so I know where everything goes. And two, I wasn't exactly all precise and accurate on everything, knowing that I probably won't see it in another two or three months because I don't have a very good track record with these things. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye.